Human Settlements Ministry, including Minister Mamaloko Gubai and her deputy, are set to unpack South Africa's first national report on the implementation of the new urban agenda. The report looks at ways to address urbanization in achieving the country's vision for human settlements. SABC News reporter Atule Joka has more from the ICC in the mother city, Cape Town. Today, what we are doing, we are releasing it um, for, it's going to be publicized for final comments, and then we'll take it to cabinet, and then out of that process, it will be submitted to UN. This is part of the work that we do in evaluating where we are as a country in providing services. There's been commitment on what needs to be done to improve the quality of service, specifically focusing on informal settlements, uh, ensuring that there's um, alignment to the SDG. Um, goals, um, especially SDG Goal 1, um, and also just making sure that we bring everybody on board. The reason why we are here is to also bring everybody on board. They've been able to input, they've been part of the meetings, wanted them to see what has come out of their inputs, uh, whether people, so that when you go, whether people are comfortable with what we are doing, so that when you go to UN, you don't have NGOs saying, but this is not what we agreed upon, or this is what, because sometimes you find a challenge where views differ. Somebody has make this input but it's not generally supported and it's not in the report and then you find some dissent so we're trying to build that consensus as we go towards submitting the report so it's about improving the quality of service in human settlement area in terms of informal settlement upgrading making sure that people have uh, we deal with the poverty line issues in terms of communities but ownership of land as well and also who did you consult maybe some of the challenges and also looking at the dynamics of South Africa Look, there's been a broad consultation province by province. The team went, uh, consulted your community-based organizations, NGOs, uh, women organizations, as you've had some of the women saying, we've been part of this thing. Yes, you produce good reports. You're producing what we have imported, inputted into, but the challenge is the implementation. So researchers, academia have been part of this per province. I think what is coming out of the meeting today or the engagement today from the NGOs sector specifically, is saying to us, look, we are comfortable with what the report is saying, but what has been over time as a challenge is the implementation. So they're feeling that as we do this work, when we come to, we put together the reports, we put together the plans together, but as we do the implementation and monitoring, we leave them behind, and that's why my commitment to say, because currently we do not have a platform where we engage. Um, NGOs across the country. We'll have to look at that, look at what provinces are doing or municipalities are the models that we can use because some of them are sharing. You'd know there's issues like uh, Umamu Ulomdu Rose who are saying she's from a, a organization called Fed Up. You'd know there's Abashali Bim Jondon. You know there's Backyard Dwellers as well. So we'd have to bring all these organizations together so that we can ensure that when we plan, when we align our responsibilities and priorities, we have their inputs as well. But we consistently report to them and formalize the structures that we engage so that we can have a uniform way of doing across the country. Um, Minister, um, with the implementation of uh, the report, will it come with additional funding? How will it work? Look, I don't think it will come with additional funding. It might necessitate reprioritizations. So as we look at what we are doing, the report saying these are the areas that we must pro, uh, improve. One of the things critical for now is how we are implementing our informal settlement program. It's very clear that the process in what we are doing uh, is tedious, needs a review so that there can be efficiency. And what that becomes, it's something else. I do believe that that can still be done within the funds that we have. Is there perhaps maybe a time frame uh, for the implementation? Look, the report is going to UN um, latest, I think, if I'm not mistaken, by April. Um, yeah, April, so we need to move faster to go to cabinet. But for us, the implementation continues. Um, as we are sitting now, there's quite a number of issues that we are dealing with in reviewing how we are implementing our informal settlements. Uh, with the municipalities, what is good with the metros is that their budget is coming to an end as we go into new environment, into the new financial cycle. We'll have conversations. I mean, their feedback, where they are also giving us feedback to say, while you're giving us this financial support, there are constraints which are making it impossible for us to do. Therefore, we are requesting you as minister to review them. So that will be incorporated.
Um, the incorporation of the review of the budget, will it also look at um, the budget cuts for the human settlement in the city of Cape Town taking into account, you know, being fire season, the number of informal settlements that have, you know, burnt in this last few months and the city not being able to provide fire star tickets for, you know, people to rebuild their homes? I think there's a confusion about the fire starter kit. Let me clarify. The fire starter kits are a service that provided by social developments, not human settlements. So I get people saying, no, you've stopped this funding. You have, no, no, no. It's not us. What we have is an emergency grant. We've had a discussion with both the MMC who's here, MMC boy, and also we are looking at what we can do uh, with the team so that we respond as human settlements. As you look at it, uh, when I did the media briefing on Friday, I responded to say we are seeing more and more disasters. Mm -hmm. So you'd find in Cape Town it's, it's um, fires. You'd find in, in case that then it's more storms, in Eastern Cape it's more storms. So we find the mechanism to be dynamic and agile to respond to that because when a fire happens tonight, somebody's on the streets. What do we do as human settlements with a constrained fiscal environment that is there? So there isn't a cut in budgets. The budgets are already done because Minister of Finance have already presented budgets. Budget. So right now we are actually as a portfolio looking at how do we utilize this budget that we have been allocated. And the next review of budget will be in October when Minister tables an adjustment. So what we do from our side is to say with the budget that we have, are we able to bring partnerships? Are we able to reprioritize? What are the critical areas that we do? How do we improve uh, service delivery so that we are able to perform better? And that's what we focus on. Also, the talk about the upgrading of informal settlements, does this mean maybe in the future we are looking to make sure that informal settlements are habitual places of living and not maybe looking to eradicate them anymore? We will have to have proper conversation with people who are in informal settlements. There are those that we have to eradicate where the people are sitting in difficult areas, where they are not sitting in, in better areas. The priority now is to say, can we move more into service stands? We get land, we put them properly, even if they have shacks, but it's within a stand that has water, electricity, and sanitation. In that way, we know that we have provided d d uh, dignity while we are working towards providing houses over time. Because if we want to say everybody will, will get a house now, it's not going to happen because the budgets are not geared for that. So it's going to be yes. But what are the best way of ensuring that the dignity is preserved? You are able to provide basic services. It's those things. But what becomes a challenge, for example, in other areas you find that when you move into these informal settlements, you find, as you do assessment and data gathering, you find that somebody sitting in this informal settlement has a house somewhere. So was given a house in RDP in another province, has moved into the... So we need to review our policy to allow for movement of people. If you leave a province, sit over the house back to us so that when you move, let's say you are in Eastern Cape, you got an RTP house. When you move to Western Cape, you need to see the house in Eastern Cape to us so that when you get to Western Cape, you are able to allocate. Currently, we are not able to because you have a house. You are deemed as a having benefited. Whereas you might find that at Eastern Cape, you no longer need that one. So that's, those are the conversations as well that I believe the NGOs will assist us with the communities to alert them. But others are just naughty. Where you find somebody has a, a house, they sell it and they go and start an informal settlement. But others are arguing that, Minister, you are saying a house in the hand of a, a, a South African is an economic tool. So because they, it's poverty, they sell it to make money. So those are the things that we'll have to have conversations with communities, how best do we believe in developing. Other areas what we are doing, allowing them to have backyard rooms to a particular area so that they can generate income out of those. Those are some of the things that will converse and change in terms of policy as we go forward. Don't you have fears maybe the new urban agenda will aid uh, the migration and the urbanization of people from rural areas to come more? Look, the fears are there in terms of human settlement is very complex. Um, human settlements, you can't solve it as, as minister alone. You can't solve it as government alone. You need everybody. So that's why engagements 
are important with various stakeholders. But secondly, human settlements to be the, the movement of people is because of economic activities. So the link with rural development and economic activities in rural areas is important as well. Because not everybody wants to come to cities. They are forced to come to cities because they are looking for jobs. They are looking for opportunities, even if they are SMMEs. Better opportunities will exist in urban areas compared to rural areas. Now the strategy around rural development becomes very uh, important. How do we ignite economic activities, what we call LEDs, in municipalities in local areas such that you don't see this growing patterns of movement? And if you are to have this growing patterns of movement, how do you deal with it more responsively and make sure that people, for example, don't go and start checks where they can actually end up in affordable rental space, which we provide as human settlements, and we extend it, we want to accelerate that program so that more people can be able to say, I have a 600, while normally you would not be able to rent with 600 in a city of Cape Town. But with our affordable rental stock, you could be able to rent a bachelor room or rent a particular apartment, and you are living and you don't have to be in a shack. So, that integrated response that we have will help us. We will be having more engagements in the coming few weeks about social housing and rental space so that we can make sure that the public have more information about that and how it assists us, especially in urban areas.